Hi, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about how Harper Knowles got started. In 2019, I retired from the state of Louisiana as an aircraft pilot. I flew airplanes for them for about 30 years. And I retired in May of 2019. And by June, I'd had all my honeydews done and I was getting bored. And I happened to go over to this older gentleman's house that has been a washer, dry repair person in our small town and he's a legend when he retired from a chemical plant nearby he started doing this and he became famous in, in the town anybody ever had a washer dryer problem they always came to mr harper well i found out that mr harper had bees in the walls of his house and I went over to see if he'd let me extract them from his house because I'm a, I'm a beekeeper. And he said, absolutely. And I went over there and Mr. Harper is an older gentleman. He's in his 80s and he was trying to go out of business. He had a sign out front and it said, out of business, no repairs. And while I was there getting the bees out of his house, at least four individuals brought him washing machines to repair. And I said, I thought you were out of business, Mr. Harper. And he says, he says, I can't give this business away. He said, I've tried and tried to train some people to do this and they, they, they just don't stick with it. And I said, well, I'm uh, the type of person that needs something to do. And if you'll teach me how to do this, I'll, you know, I'll help you out. And he said, okay, so I never left. And of course, he taught me a lot about the older machines, and he didn't know too much about the, the computerized machines, but I'm the type of person that I, I go in there and I, I dug up all the manuals I could find. I read everything on it. I uh, looked at YouTube videos, and I educated myself about how to repair the computerized machines uh, that we have out, out there today. Of course, Mr. Harper is a fountain of information, and he had a setup that was pretty much chaotic because he had lost the physical ability to, to move stuff around and it was just uh, a, a jumbles there. And so I uh, started cleaning the place up and while I was learning how to repair machines and we would buy uh, a machine or two from some scrappers and rebuild them and he would, he would show me how to do this and we'd rebuild them and sell them. And, uh, so over the years it has evolved to the point where uh, I said, Mr. Harper, I want to start a business, and, and uh, he said, well, I don't want it. He said, I don't want, I want all this stuff gone. I don't want to be in the business anymore. And I said, well, can I, can I use your name because everybody knows you? He said, well, absolutely, you can do that. And I said, well, I don't have any place to work. He said, well, you can work here as long as you want to. And uh, so over the last few years, it has evolved where he's still around, but he he doesn't, uh, he's not uh, involved in, in any service calls or, or any major repairs. But whenever I need him or his advice, he's always there. And when I go on service calls, he's always there at the shop, you know, take customers money and, or, or, you know, uh, check their machines in if they bring me machines to work on. So it, it got to where I needed a place to work. I, I, I bought a shop to, to move all this to. but. Everything is at his location, and he has taken years and years to, to for you know, to develop this place, and and it was seemed silly for me to to leave, and he enjoyed me to be being there. Well, at least he tells me that, and uh, so it got to where I just rent the facility from him, and he's always around, and he, you know, he he's uh, he's not really involved in the business but his name is on the business because people respect him and he has built up a, a great reputation in our community so i'm trying to keep him involved as much as he wants to be and uh, that's the way it works out but anyway here's a small tour of the place I, I work of course it you know it's untidy and things are thrown around a lot but you should have seen it before i got there we have cleaned the place up a lot all the machines were just all over the place and now they're in nice rows and stuff and having a boneyard is pretty nice to have uh, where you can find old parts that uh, the, the more expensive I don't like to put old parts on customers machines but if the part 
is a very expensive part, I will take an old part and sell it as a used part, usually uh, less than half price of what you can buy one on the internet. But here's a, a small tour of uh, where I work and uh, how I organize things. Uh, I hope you en enjoy it, so uh, just watch this. Some of it I'll narrate and some of it's al already narrated, so uh, please enjoy the video. And here's Roscoe, he's a neighborhood dog. He, nobody owns him, he just uh, comes and goes. This fellow down the street that feeds him calls him Big Dog. I call him Roscoe, other people call him different things. And this is a walkthrough of our bone yard. You can see here on the right, there's some plastic tubs that I've, I've taken out of machines and I've flattened the, the cases out to take to the junkyard. Uh, I've, I've arranged these things in rows and I've pretty much gone through all of these uh, machines and taken the parts that I want off of them. And we really need to have a crusher or something uh, to come through here and uh, smash these machines up and give us some more geography is what we need. There's an old trailer in the center of this boneyard that Mr. Harper uses for storage. Uh, most of these machines have been scrapped out, like I said, but there's still some good motors in them and some water valves and whatnot that I, I can still use. But for the most part, I've uh, taken mo all of this stuff out. You can see here the newer machines are, are kind of uh, separated from the older style. I have an assortment of dryers. It's just every make and model you can imagine. Mr. Harper had about half of this uh, when I came to work with him. And we've collected uh, the rest of it over the past few years. This is going into the open uh, shop area. These are machines that we fixed and uh, we have for sale. Uh, I had a, a good spell of cold weather where the business was was slow and I was able to fix them up. These are machines that I bought from scrappers uh, that are pretty nice. There's my open side at the end of the driveway there. And here is a, a bunch of console tops. They still have the control boards and stuff in them. I use that often. There's some blower wheels. I've scrapped out, of course, drain hoses. You always need drain hoses and motors and uh, rotors and impellers and agitators. Now these drums, uh, people buy these drums for minter, minter buckets. They put them in the, in the creek bottoms. They put their minters in them to swim around. They also buy these to make uh, fire pits. I've seen these on the internet. They're pretty neat neat things. We sell them for 15 bucks a piece and people buy them to make fire pits. There's an assortment of uh, tops. And these are water pumps that we've scavenged, scavenged and also power cords. And there's spin tubes and of course it's just every kind of water pump you want. There's an assortment of, of some elements for Frigidaire machines. Those are new power cords. And I got these things from Harbor Freight to put small parts in. Mr. Harper spent a lot of time sorting bolts and plastic parts and pieces and that come in really handy when, when I'm working on machines and I need a part, I can usually find them. I think I would have sorted them at, at better than that, but he, had, he needed something to do. These are control boards that I've pulled from certain machines. There's some elements. And I have switches and uh, hose clamps. Uh, I have an assortment of uh, nuts and bolts, caps, everything you can imagine. These are electronic parts here. There's uh, uh, some uh, thermostats and there's uh, lid, lid switches on the bottom. Of course, I have a, a lot of knobs, some computer boards pressure valves, <clears throat> drawers full of timers that have been picked through pretty much. For, and then uh, of course we have timers for dryers too. And I'll show you how I optimize my workspace. It's just a, a small space here. But one of the first things is you need dollies. And you can use a dolly like this. It's got a, a handle on it that you can you can uh, turn it down 
But this is my favorite dolly. You can see I've got a machine on it where I can I can work on the motor and on the transmission. Anything I need to. And it's got four wheels on it. And I love this dolly because I can move this thing around. Roll it anywhere I need to. If you're gonna work on washers and dryers, you need things like a, a roll around roll around bench. Then you can put drawers maybe that you can put some tools in. But you need to really optimize your your toolbox. And here I've got just a simple toolbox. You see I've got some hand cleaner and this is my what I test my dryers with. Maybe I took me a piece of heavy PVC and I got a notch in it so so I can drop that thing in there like that. More like that, depending on what, what kind of dryer I'm, I'm working on. Of course I keep some some washing machine manuals to, to look up schematics and things. And I have goo gone to get junk off and, and of course I'm in Louisiana so I need some uh, mosquito spray every now and then. Got some Gorilla Glue spray adhesive. Sometimes you get a machine that has a slightly bent drum, you can put some foam pads in all four sides of the machine to mitigate the shaking. It's got some more goo gone in a flashlight, some Gorilla tape, and a sandpaper for the sander that I, I and the hand sander I used to sand out rust spots on machines. There's a a few other sanding things and uh, I keep a variety of wire, wire ties and a variety of brushes on this side of the machine I got just a catch-all tray I usually keep several kinds of putty knives it's magnetic so I can slap, slap it right there I keep a, a good sharpie that I write customers names and numbers on the back of and of course my often used tools I have a um, Phillips head screwdriver and a slotted head screwdriver these are easy to, to, to grab and there's some touch up epoxy paint points epoxy and down here I've got, you've got your, your water displacement 40 and this stuff right here takes labels and things off and uh, Got thing if I need to try out like a uh, a motor switch or something and some penetration stuff. This is something that you need. You throw that on the on the ground and, and kneel down on it. You can get these at your big box stores. They're just pads for your knees. I use that often. Of course, I'm older. And I use a. a I've got a, a statement pad. I use that, but most of the time I use QuickBooks on my phone to to do my my bookkeeping. And this is just a, a, a pretty cheap uh, roll around toolbox. And you you know if you're going to leave it in one place, this is absolutely sufficient. You don't need to go get a stack on or something. That's, that's the only thing you need really. On this side, I have all my my uh, parts trays these are I keep one of those with me to uh, when I'm on service calls I've got a variety of lid switch magnets uh, some deep some some penetrating a couple kinds of, of penetrating lube and when I'm drilling tough stuff I use this because I use this goof off all the time and there's some lights right there here's a jumper that I use uh, it's got two spade plugs on the end of it and you can get these to, to accessorize your tool cabinet too but I've got a drawer for miscellaneous stuff in here I keep some small files to, to file points and in timers and here's a spring-loaded punch of course uh, uh, this is this is a neat tool uh, you can clip your fingernails and do other things with it and a, a, a mirror and I there's a spare sharpie and of course I keep a first aid kit and I've got a um, variety of, of uh, air chucks that I use 
you know, for the for the uh, service truck. This right here is what you use when you get this Kaizen foam. Then you get get these sharpies like this, and uh, you trace around your your tool, and then you can cut out the thing. Of course, I have my Walmart cheaters right here. Got a variety of magnets, extendable magnets, and my often used flashlight. I got some some tape, and a pad, a sticky yellow note, a pen. Keep my business cards here, and this is where I keep my change. Usually, I usually get the change out of out of dryers and use it for customer change. And I got a, I got this this tape measure and also this little one. Here's some keys to a point operated uh, washing machine. Some more post it notes. A variety of, of cheap picks. We use those a lot. And this one I use, this is my screwdriver drawer. I've got uh, an assortment of flat heads, and then some offsets, an assortment of Phillips head, and then you have your torques. You need these torques on a lot of water valves on today's washing machine. And these tools came in something, and they were very useful. I, I just use them to when I need to uh, pull up something that won't damage with steel. So and that's where I keep most of my flyers. I use these mostly for uh, for rebuilding transmissions for snap rings. Now this is a specialty tool taken off uh, the the wire ring around the boots on front load washers. This tool right here is what I bought to cut these finger holes. So that you can reach in and grab your tool. This tool right here will cut the finger holes for you. Of course I got my vice grips, a pair of good channel locks, electrician's pliers, some dikes. Even those pliers and two supplements of pliers. These are really nice to have when you're pulling uh, sus uh, suspension rods. You can reach in there with that, with that curved tip and pull the first one out. Then you can use the first one with the hook on the end to use for the others. This is where I keep all my wrenches. And I have the, the ratchet type wrench. And I, I also have a standard SAE and your metric and then and the yeah, assortment of, of crescent style wrenches. And this is the drawer I use most often. And the most often used sockets are those three right there. I used to color code them when they were just rattling around in the drawer. This is your half inch, your 7 16ths, and a, a number 10. I use these most often on things I'm working. And also, I, I just kept the uh, the tray that all these accessories came in and, and just I cut out a slot for it. This right here, you're going to need this sometimes. And if you work with washers and dryers, you're going to need you're going to need a quarter inch and a five sixteenths um, nut driver, which I use mostly. And this one is just a, the same thing, but you can just you can pop this out and swap the ends of it. And you've got got two different. You got a five sixteenths on one end and a quarter inch on the other. I use that a, uh, a lot sometimes. When, you, when you're working on dryers and you can't get some of these uh, elements out. Now I have a, a, a variety of nut drivers here. At this point I'm going to say that when you buy tools you don't have to buy the same brand but you should always find tools that have lifetime guarantees. And since I've been working with washers and dryers I have had to replace these my most often used tools at least three or four times I can't remember but you just take them down to where you bought them from and say hey this no longer functions and they happily hand you another one of course I have my quarter inch drive um, ratchet and I like these because they're two different sizes you can, you can use and here's the larger one you have the three eighths and the half inch. Alright, in this drawer I keep an assortment of hammers and punches and some specialty tools. This is what I use to to pull uh, 
uh, washing machine tubs that you you would take this this tool here and take the the spanner nut off the top of the tub and then take it upside down put the spanner nut back on it and take this tool put it underneath this and and you can you can pull that tub with that of course this is the G uh, nut tool here's some rubber hammers and a, a good two pound hammer to to hit this tool with to, to take the spanner nuts off and I also have a little claw hammer and you notice that kaizen foam is great stuff because if you have a tool missing and, and you got the color coded kind you can tell exactly what's missing and put it back in its spot also use this a lot this is just a, a transmission shaft out of a washing machine and I use it to actually drive a transmission out that is stuck in the spin tube you can take one end of it and put on the on the uh, other end of the same type rod and whack it with a hammer and you can you can do that several times metal to metal, metal without really damaging the, the transmission keep my electrical stuff in here I've got an assortment of connectors uh, this I just keep change that I pull out of a dryer I keep my uh, assortment of, of uh, bypass dongles in here and uh, these are really nice if you ever have a, a an agitator bolt that won't that's rusted out and won't come out if you get this type of uh, bolt remover these things work wonderfully I have never I was amazed the first time I used one it will grip that rusted out bolt and come right out of course I have a roll of electrical tape and I have some um, Allen wrenches and also some some torque wrenches that we put on a socket. This is a knife I bought to cut all this stuff out, and I'm gonna keep it. And a that goes whirlpool. And here's some extra blades for it. Of course, the assortment of bits. And this is a tap wrench set that I I use. I don't use it that often, but when I need it, I got it. Of course, I have an electric temperature gauge, and I rarely use it but it's, it's nice when you can't get right to something an assortment of of uh, splice i use these splices uh sometimes to bypass washing machines that uh you know on the fly so i, I just put those um on there and i don't have to cut the the wires of course i have my multimeter And I just cut it out of slot, put the put the uh, cords in, and then you're going to need some crimping tools for some little things here, and your catch-all. This started out as, as a uh, specialty tool drawer, but. Uh, so I have my, my Weller a soldering iron in here and all the, the things I need for that. I have my cord in here, different tips, uh, some flux and solder and uh, solder removing wick. I've used, uh, used a few air tools, usually use a little grinding wheel sometimes that you can't get some of those agitator bolts out you have to grind the head off to get the agitator out this this works well you stick it down inside the agitator and just grind that bolt till the head comes off and then sometimes you have things you need to cut off so i have a little whiz wheel here i also have these tools to change bearings you have the tools to change bearings in a, a and some of these high-end machines that have direct drive and if, if you've ever you, these are these are bearing presses parts of it and they all go together this is a tool that i made 
it's just a piece of PVC pipe and if you ever change the, the seals and the spin tubes on a washing machine this is what it looks like and to get the thing back you have to this is a, got a piece of metal inside it and to get one of these back in there without puncturing it you need something like this and what what you do is when you put this down in your machine you can take uh, I took this piece of PVC and uh, I uh, kind of sand it off sanded it where it would fit down inside the tube and it would fit over the top of the the thing and then you just whack it a few times with a hammer and goes right in without without damaging the, the new uh, seal and I just put this one here for to remind me what I use it for. Alright, here's just a catch-all thing. This is some stuff right here that every toolbox should have. This is dampening grease. And you can take this stuff, it's really sticky. If you need if you're working upside down or something, you need like a a washer to stay in place, you just put a dab of that on that washer and you can you can just stick it right there and it's grease and it'll stay put until you can put your nut on it or whatever. I use that a lot in, for different things. I have put it on on the hangers on the suspension rods, it, it dampening dampening the, the movement of it. Of course here's grease and stuff that came from other jobs and I use different adhesives. This I use to, to make the reseal the uh, whirlpool transmission when I rebuild them. And I have I print these out for customers that'll come by and belt from me and they don't know how it goes back on. And I found this on the internet and I keep a uh, look at there, there's a there's the address right there if you can look at that you can maybe print your own out. You can read that. Anyway, I print these out and I keep them on hand to give customers. It tells you how to put belts on different types of machines. Of course, I have service manuals. Uh, for There's a G pamphlet. There's all kinds of different service manuals down in here. So I just put an open square spot and put all this stuff in. And I keep batteries and some water well. And the thing about doing your shadow in your toolbox. If you know where everything is and it saves a lot of time and i have these right here these are uh let me open one up i've used these in the past to pull uh use these in the past to pull uh agitators that won't come out you can slip these underneath the, uh, an agitator and, and pump it up and the air pressure will put pressure on that agitator and eventually push pull it off they made one of these and I've tried to get my hands on one it was in like a, a donut shape with an opening in it and you could you could uh, you know slide that underneath an agitator and it would it would uh, provide uh, equal pressure all the way around it to, to take it out but I found these on Amazon and there's three different sizes and you, they, they work well when you have one that's, that's stuck and uh, they don't work all that well though. But anyway, back in my career as an aircraft pilot, I was around a lot of aircraft mechanics and all of them had their, their toolboxes shadowed and I asked them why one time. And, I asked one of my friends, I said, why do you do that? And he says, because the amount of time it takes to find one socket in a drawer full of sockets is seconds uh, compared to minutes when they're all jumbled up. And when you sit, shadow them like this, you know where your tools are missing and when they're not. And they don't roll around. You can shake that drawer all day long. And they don't wind up all in the back or in the front. And they're always where you need them, when you need them. Saves lots of time. 
So when you set up your shop, you'll need a test area for both washers and dryers. My washer test area is outside with a two inch drain line that drains into a field. I use only cold water that I split so that I can supply both the hot and the cold inlets of a washer that I'm testing. And you can do that by using something like this adapter. Uh, you will also need a power source. I use an extension cord on the outside, but in the future I'm going to make a 120 volt power outlet that I can access outside. Basically your, your washing machine test stand is going to look very similar to what you have inside your home that you can hook a washer up to. And if you have a, a large volume of, of business, you might want to put in at least two of these test areas so that you can work on two machines at the same time. Okay, to test dryers, you're going to need a 220 volt power outlet and at least a three prong receptacle. And you're also going to need a four prong receptacle because you you can you see both types of dryers come into your shop. And unless you want to start changing out power cords to accommodate what particular uh, receptacle you have, you should have two. Sometimes you may even have a customer that, that uses a range plug cord on their dryer and for that I also have a range receptacle. But this, I, I fix this receptacle up to a three prong cord that I can plug into a standard uh, dryer receptacle. I might point out here that if you plan to work on gas dryers, you're also going to need a natural gas source in your dryer test area. Oh, and you're also going to need a small air compressor or source of air that you can use to blow out the inside of dryers uh, uh, and use air, air tools when you, you need it. And I use this, this is the exact air compressor that I use in, in my shop and it uh, supplies enough air for what I need. Okay, also you need a fan for the summertime down here. And this is where I keep the machines that I, I fix and sell. First I have a parts washer. You can see how often I use it. And I got a bunch of these things that I keep old parts on. And in here I have what have them too where you keep new parts on them. And uh, over time you'll find a lot of stuff that you yeah you know, I mean you'll you'll accumulate a lot a lot of stuff. You'll accumulate a bone yard like way out there. I think there are over 200 machines out there, different kinds of, and I'm in the process of, of breaking them all down, parting them out, and and selling the, the selling the uh, junk iron for them. But anyway, that's what it looks like around here. This is where I work most of the time. I have another shop in another location that is uh, a whole lot neater than this one. I'm, Kind of OCD, but this is where this is a where I work with Mr. Harper. So this is where we do most of our work. So anyway, that's that's a tour of my shop. Thanks for watching.